What's up YouTube? This is Hal Runner from the Posable Plastic Team and here today I have a little bit of a special video for you. Uh, I don't usually videotape projects as I do them but today I've decided to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough on it. I was inspired by the Budget Jedi. Uh, you can go check him out if you want to. Um, he did a project a while back. I know he was inspired by another YouTube uh, project, you know, creator, person, you know, guy. And uh, he actually really they really both did really cool Mustafar dioramas but today uh, I decided to try and tackle this myself so I'm gonna go ahead and dive in here um, I'm kind of taking ideas from a few different YouTube videos uh, first I've got a really long piece of like two inch foam it's like two inches thick by maybe three feet three and a half feet and uh, it's it's foam I got at Michael's. It's that special carving foam. It's not packing foam. Um, so that's one thing I did a little differently. And I'm actually going to cut this in half because it's really, really long. But they didn't have anything thicker. So uh, I'm going to cut this in half, stack it on top of each other, glue that together. Uh, I got some Loctite adhe adhesive spray glue in a can. So I'm going to be using that a lot in this project. I also got some great stuff. And that is great stuff, let me tell you. Um, I got the blue can just because I had thought that uh, the Budget Jet Jedi used blue, but I went back and looked again, and it turns out he was using red, but I really don't think it matters for what I'm doing. And then I got um, some plastic wrap for the lava. I'm kind of going to do basically the same thing as what the Budget Jedi did uh, for the lava part with a one extra tweak. And this is the main difference, I think, that sets my project apart let me focus in here is these I got these at Michaels I'm sure you can get them at any um, model store but basically they're different types of rock and uh, I got two different types I got one bag of the largest rock they had and I'm gonna tell you what I'll do with these in a minute Okay, so when I was going through all my paint, I have a ton of spray paint. I mean like a literal ton. And I'm always using it and doing neat things with it. Uh, but I managed to find a yellow and an orange and two different reds. So I'm going to experiment with those two reds and see which one. I imagine gloss would turn out the best for lava. But I also have a matte in case that doesn't work. And we'll mix them in and combine them. But between those two different colors, I think we have our lava. And uh, then I have two matte grays. Sorry about the focus issue there. But yeah, I have two matte grays. One's a full can, one's like almost half, so we'll see. That should cover this whole thing. But, uh, yep. Okay, so I've got it out in the garage now, and I've got it measured here. I've got a yardstick on it, and I want to cut it exactly in the middle. Okay, so what I ended up doing is the Loctite was not gripping to the foam enough, so I ended up... Uh, popping it back open and uh, giving it some Gorilla Glue which you know can't go wrong with Gorilla Glue okay so now I went over to our uh, car washing area I call it and uh, grabbed just a few pieces of gravel and uh, I'm gonna take them hold this over it and smash them and I want to get some slightly bigger chunks that I can spray paint uh, black and give it kind of that, you know, lava, limestone-esque rock look and have just a few, a few center pieces of rock that kind of everything else kind of, you know, is dwarfed by, so. Alright, so I've got the pieces all smashed up now and I think they kind of look like giant miniature boulders and, uh, this one I did not smash because I kind of like the look of it the way it is. I kind of think it looks like something that's already miniaturized. So that's done now. Okay, so now as far as the foam block goes, you can see I've carved a line, a basic shape out of how I want to do it. Because I want it to kind of have the shape of a slowly rising dune type effect and then up here will be the highest point and I want these to kind of rise just a little bit above so I'm going to try and carve that so that it's kind of a pathway leading back type effect okay 
my hands are shaking been working really hard on this so I've got uh, the entire thing covered in spackle now all the way around and uh, all right so I went ahead let me give you a close-up here I went ahead and went back over it and uh, let me see there we go and while it was tacky I just spread it around just very lightly just delicately and uh, there we go and now it looks like rock now it's really awesome now I'm really confident in the uh, the texture of it but I'm still gonna go ahead and use the rock packs that I bought just to kinda give it the added esque okay so now I'm gonna do all the tedious stuff inside because it is hot out there so I took two long sheets of uh, paper towels spread them out and uh, I'm going to take a few of these rocks and a few of these rocks and I'm going to spread them around this and this so now I, uh, I got my hobby kit out try to stay as organized as I can and uh, basically the only thing I got out of there was the uh, you know this thing okay so the rock stuff is all on and I took some of the gravel and just kind of did like three and then two I actually stacked that on top of another rock and uh, then I took the the medium grade the large boulder gravel and just kind of sprinkled it around and then I scanned it and anything I thought looked too man-made I just kind of shifted put together a little closer but usually gravity gravity is the master and I just kind of let it all fall into place I'd say that this thing weighs about six or seven pounds um, you know with everything on it mostly the spackle is what's making it weigh a lot more alright so it turned out really amazing um, it's still drying but I went ahead and set it up and sprayed it on the board a little better so I could you know get more of a 360 and have a more walk around but uh, yeah really really turning out good got a really good texture to it and all the rocks got just the right amount of texture and spray it's really really awesome really really cool and I scraped off some of this edging that I thought might catch on things like right here I just did a little bit more I'm just afraid you know shuffling it around I don't want to have to go back later and touch touch up every little thing you know so uh, just kinda pecking off right now while it's still you know dentable alright just to update y'all I'm on to the next step which is the smaller the medium sized gravel and what I did was I took Elmer's glue just regular old orange tip Elmer's glue and um, I did just kind of like a circle and then another circle and I took a brush and then I spread it all around like paint and then I took this bag and kind of poured it all over really thick super thick and then I pressed it all down with my fingers but not not too hard just kind of firmly and then I'm letting it dry and then once it's dry I'll tip the whole thing over and whatever sticks sticks and whatever doesn't you know we don't need them so anyway okay so now I've got all of the gravel spread around on there and it's all dried and I took the Loctite spray and gave it one more coat and let that dry and now it's all locked on so now we're gonna give it the final coat of black and that should be it here we have it the complete uh, I'll say how under version because that's my call sign on the posable plastic team of the uh, Mustafar diorama 
Yeehaw. Let me give you a little close up shot. How everything turned out after I painted it. And everything that wanted to stay, stayed. And the things that didn't want to stay, just blew off into, I don't know where, somewhere down there. And uh, see, now you've got these little cracks of where the spackle kind of said new and pulled away from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a needle as like the final step and just do like an orange in there. I think that'll be really cool. All right, a little bit of an update. I went over it with a little bit of this 99 cent spray and just did a few areas. Just to kind of just to kind of, you know, give it the rocked effect. Just wanted a little bit of something. Alright, so I finished doing the final touch-up, the detailing work, and now it's finished. Wow. I can't, I didn't even think it would turn out this great, but I, I think I just outdid myself. This is really amazing. Uh, let me show you up here. See what I did was I mixed several different paints, the uh, the fluorescent orange. The uh, I also took some some of this. Well, I can't show you, but anyway, it's testers model paint, and I mixed it with some orange to try and make it a little more pliable because it was kind of runny. And that did the trick. And uh, I just used an old lid that they actually were throwing out. So uh, I used that. And then the yellow was just an experiment that didn't work. But yeah, it ended up working. Just play around with your paints and uh, you'll figure it out like I did. And uh, yeah, it really just absolutely without this it would look like any other diorama but between the different size gravel and the lava detailing with the spackle cracking and all that it just really really just does most of our justice to the extreme guys this is this is amazing i i really am really just so happy with this it looks like a giant oreo cake Okay, so I've got the plastic wrap wrapped around a piece of plywood, and I've also got great stuff, and I've got some uh, special gloves, they're like medical gloves, and uh, now I'm ready to spray. Okay, so I took it, I sprayed it, and then I spread it around, and look at that. I don't have any extra excess on me. I, uh, I pulled those gloves off. I managed to finagle them off of me after I uh, finished and uh, I didn't get any on me which is amazing with this stuff because it is really messy. I put the first coat on the uh, lava flow so that's really cool. The yellow of the foam is accenting the orange really well but I'm gonna I'm still gonna fixing a tab over here I'm still gonna give it a uh, another coat of uh, red and then spot some areas of yellow and orange again but I figured orange would be a good base coat okay so I moved all the paint down there to kind of get more organized and what I ended up doing was I'm, I did like four or five streaks and I'm gonna go back over those with the primary colors again so that it kind of looks like the the darker kind of cooling off lava is centralized around rocks alright so I went out today fresh start and got some uh, let's see rust-oleum gloss regular gloss yellow and then some fluorescent orange I figured maybe the fluorescent orange and the regular gloss yellow would kind of do the trick so we'll see at least yellow of any sort is gonna at least do something for the lava but that other can just blocked up for some reason Okay, so let me give you an exact layout of what I did. First, I uh, sprayed the fluorescent orange on it, and I let that dry. And then I, uh, and, and what I did with the orange was basically I gave it 
kind of a light just overspray like a mist and then I did some thick spots uh, and then between that and the regular orange I really think it did it did a true lava feeling it wasn't too fluorescent and then I went in the orange with the yellow and I did some like yellow blotches because I went through Google last night and I looked at a bunch of pictures of what lava really how it really flows and it really the lava is kind of centralized to the really hot spots and so uh, that's how that's what I did with the yellow and then to give it a rocky effect I kind of went over with just a matte black just a basic 99 cent can you can get these at Walmart and I uh, sprayed that with uh, you know just kind of I did the whole line like the budget jet I did that because I thought that was a really good idea because that's where the uh, the base is gonna go the rock base but then I went through and like the area I said I was gonna put uh, Anakin on that area I painted black um, and then some other areas I painted you know some some of the bigger blocks I painted black and then I'm gonna go back over and just do the same thing with a hand brush a model brush that'll give it the final oomph and then uh, I kind of just went over and just kind of gave it some little touches you can see right here just to kind of makes it look a little more authentic when you do that I think and uh, then I went back over the final thing I did was I went back over with the yellow because it had major black overspray and the yellow needs to be the most vivid so there you go and the mail's here yay so I'm gonna go get that okay now I'm I finished detailing it uh, with the matte black that I sprayed in the cup from outside now thanks for watching guys this has been a really fun project and I know uh, I hope anyway that most of you viewers out there are going to take this and go even more extreme with it. But this is the best I can do for now. I'm going to do a, another video later on on how to illuminate it. Uh, I've got to get all the stuff together for that. And I don't want to draw this video out too long. But uh, yeah, thanks again to the YouTube community, the especially the diorama community. I've been watching a ton of videos on this getting loads of ideas. I want to send a special shout out to the Budget Jedi because he's the guy that actually started me on this journey. Whether he knows it or not, I'm going to send him the video anyway. So uh, thank you very much and you inspired me by uh, all your videos and hopefully uh, maybe I can inspire somebody else now. So thanks again guys and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And you can also keep track of us on Twitter over there and uh, we're always updating that and keeping you guys up and posted on what's coming up next. Thanks again.